Alright, in this video we're going to talk about solving quadratic equations. And recall a quadratic equation is an equation where you have uh, a variable to a second power, you may or may not have a variable to the first power, and then you may or may not have a constant floating around. You definitely need this uh, variable to the second power, and you don't want any other weird powers floating around. The basic idea on any quadratic equation is you'll set it equal to zero. And the easiest way to solve them, if possible, is you try to factor out what you're left with um, on the left side. So recall to factor a quadratic. When the coefficient is a 1 on an x squared, we can use the following trick. So to get an x squared, I'll need an x and an x. And then I think about numbers that multiply to 6. but I need numbers that add up to the middle term, in this case, positive 5. Well, two numbers that multiply to positive 6 are positive 2 and positive 3. So this is how the quadratic equation will factor. And now the idea is you just set each piece equal to 0 and solve it individually. So if I set x plus 2 equal to 0, I'll simply get x equals negative 2 as a solution. And then I'll set the other piece equal to 0. And I'll solve that and get x equals negative 3 as a solution. And you can definitely check that if you plug in both negative 2 or negative 3 in this original equation, you will get 0 out on the left side. OK, so here's another quadratic equation. I see an x squared, an x to the first power, and a number floating around. The first thing that you have to do, always, 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 is make one side equal to zero. So in this case, I can set the right side equal to zero by subtracting 24 from both sides. So that'll cancel out with the 24 on the right side. And now I'm going to try to factor it just like before. Um, the first thing you'll always want to do when factoring, though, is think, is there anything in common that I can factor out? Notice there's a 3, a 6, and a 24. Well, I can take a 3 out of there because 3 will go into all of those numbers. Then I'll need an x squared, a plus 2x, and a minus 8 back on the inside. And just like my last problem, I'm now going to try to factor down the x squared plus 2x minus 8 term. So the 3 is just kind of hanging out. Again, I'll need an x and an x to get my x squared term. I need two numbers that multiply to negative 8, but add to positive 2. Well, I could use 1 and 8, but that's not going to give me a 2 somehow. How about 2 and 4? That certainly multiplies to 8. To get a negative 8, one term is going to have to be positive, one will have to be negative. Since I want a positive 2, I'll make the larger of the two numbers positive. So I'll have x minus 2, x plus 4 equals 0. And just like before, if I set each um, individual piece in parentheses equal to 0, I'll get x equals 2 being a solution, and I'll get x equaling negative 4 as another solution. Okay, so this is the basic idea with the quadratic equation. Now there's other rules as well um, called the, the AC method or the 2AC method if the coefficient on the x squared is not a 1. And I just never mess with that. That's something I never really learned. And I managed to get through a whole lot of uh, my math career with never, with never knowing that, that formula. So suppose we have this particular problem, 2x squared minus x minus 7. Well, you could try to factor this. To get the 2x squared, to get the x squared term, I'll need an x and an x. To get 2, you can only really use 2 and 1. And to get 7, I can only use, well, 7 and 1. One of those being positive, one of those being negative. And you can kind of play around putting 7 in one place, 1 in the other, making it positive one time, making it negative in the other. And I think you'll find out that just none of these factorizations are going to turn out to be correct. So the good way, it's the long way, but the good thing about it is it always works, is what's known as the quadratic formula. 
and it says in general if you have a quadratic and I'm gonna call the number in front of x squared a I'll call the number in front of x I'll call that number b and then whatever numbers hanging around we're gonna label that as c and it says if you wanna find where this thing equals zero we use the following formula so it says x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times a and those will give you your solutions you can do this on the last problems in the exact same way in that case on this problem a would be 1 b would be positive 5 c would be positive 6 and you'll see at the end that you'll get these two solutions that we found before, negative 2 and negative 3. So the good thing about the quadratic formula is, is that it always works, but if you can factor it, it's simply much easier just to factor it and do it that way. Unfortunately, not all problems factor. So again, going back to my original problem, the value in front of the x squared is the a term. I could write this as negative 1. That's going to be my b term. And c is the number hanging out, which is just going to be negative 7. So these are the values that I'm going to substitute in. It says you'll get negative, negative 1, that's my b value, plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a, which in this case, oops, I wrote 1 up here for some weird reason. a is 2, certainly, in this case. So negative 4 times a, which is 2, times c, which is negative 7. And that's all being divided by 2 times a. And again, a in my problem is 2. So now I have to simplify all of this stuff down. So negative negative 1 is positive 1, plus or minus the square root. Underneath, I'm going to get a 1. Then I have negative 4 times 2, that's negative 8. Negative 8 times negative 7 is positive 56 over 2 times 2, which is 4. And from here, I just keep simplifying. So it says I'm going to get 1 plus or minus the square root of 1 plus 56, which is 57, over 4. And at this point, if you could simplify down the square root, I would say simplify it down. Um, let's see, 57, I can rewrite that as 3 times 19, but I can't take a square root of 3 or of 19, nor there nor can I factor either one of those numbers. So I can't really reduce radical 57. And it says my solutions, I'm going to get 1 plus radical 57 over 4. And my other solution is going to be 1 minus radical 57 divided by 4. And these will be the values that if I plug them back into the original equation, I'll end up getting a zero out. Okay, so certainly, um, you know, I wouldn't have been able to factor this and spot these numbers. So that's the good thing about using this quadratic formula, is that it always, always works, um, assuming your, your quadratic equation does have a solution. And the other thing is, well, again, well, basically it always works. Um, the downside is it's a little tedious. So you can see that it's a little tedious. A little word of warning, not all quadratic equations have solutions. So as a trivial example, consider this equation, x squared plus 1 equals 0. Without even trying to factor it, or use the quadratic formula, let's think about it. Well, certainly if you plug 0 in, that's not going to work, because you'll get 0 plus 1, which is not 0. 
But likewise, if you plug any negative number or any positive number in for x, well, you'll square it. You'll still get a positive number. And a positive number plus 1 is not going to equal 0. So this is an example of a quadratic equation that has no solutions. If you were to graph this quadratic equation, you would see that it doesn't touch the x-axis. That's another indication that there are no solutions to this equation. And what's going to happen is, if you rewrote this as x squared plus 0x plus 1, so again, a in this case would be equal to positive 1. That would be your a term. b would be equal to 0 and c would be equal to positive 1. You would find that what happens, so maybe you try to factor it, that didn't work, then you decide to use the quadratic formula. You would find in this case that the b squared minus 4ac underneath the, the square root is a negative number when you simplify it down. And remember again, we don't allow negative numbers underneath square roots. Again, you can use imaginary numbers, but we don't want imaginary numbers in this case. So if your b squared minus 4ac turns out to be negative, it means that that quadratic equation has no solutions. This b squared minus 4ac is sometimes called the discriminant. So if the discriminant is negative, it says there's no solutions. If the discriminant is either 0 or positive, you will have solutions as we did in the example I just did. So again, there's a couple other techniques when um, factoring quadratic equations. The only thing I think you ever really need to know is just basically being able to factor. And if it's at all more tedious to me, I'll simply use the quadratic equation and be done with it. Um, I think the other techniques can be interesting, but like I said, to me, it's just more things that you're memorizing. And I don't know, I don't want to memorize any more than I have to. So I would say if you just remember those two techniques, you shouldn't ever run into a quadratic equation that'll give you any problems. So I hope these examples help. Definitely, if you're taking algebra, plan on going on any further, doing any more math, you will see quadratic equations all the time. So you will want to be very you know, familiar and comfortable dealing with those. If you've forgotten a little bit about factoring or any other topic, feel free to visit my website, just mathtutoring.com. There's a whole bunch of calculus and algebra videos on there, all for free. So just go there, find the topic of your choice, and feel free to watch it as often as you want. So I hope these help, and good luck.